Okay, hello grade 10s. I hope you had a nice weekend, if uh, weekends are even really that much of a thing anymore. Uh, so I have our first five minute question here. I just want you to convert the factored form equation here into standard form. Uh, this is straight from last lesson, and that means I want you to FOIL it. Okay? Uh, so you'll hear me call it expand sometimes, or convert from factored to standard. Uh, it all just means FOIL. So please do that. I really would like you to pause and try that. A lot of you have done the, uh, the little quiz on FOIL from last week. Uh, and a few people aren't quite there yet. I'm hoping that one more example here will help. Uh, and then once you do that, try to tell me what the zeros are and what the y-intercept is. Or try to tell yourself, I suppose, uh, since I won't be able to hear you. Uh, so please try that. Please pause now and try. Okay, so first I'm going to write y equals again. Because when I expand, this part will change. It'll look different. Uh, but it'll be the same thing. So first, I do x times x. And x times x is x squared. Next, I do x times plus 4. And I get plus 4x. And then I do negative 5 times x. And I get minus 5x. And finally, I do negative 5 times negative 4 which is negative 20, and you can use a calculator for that, of course. Now the trick here, this first part stays the same, the last term is going to stay the same, but in the middle, we have to take 4x and subtract 5x. So I do 4 minus 5, and I get negative 1. So this middle part is negative 1, and both of these are x's, so the result will also have an x. Okay, so here's the first part of the first five-minute question. Um, now what I would really like you to do is to figure out what the zeros are and figure out what the y-intercept is. Okay, so if you didn't try that, I encourage you to pause and try it now. All right, so you might remember from last week that the numbers in the brackets here, the signs are actually opposite. So the zeros are going to be x equals... And from this one, I'm going to get 5. And from this one, if I change the sign, I'm going to get negative 4. So the zeros are, are 5 and negative 4, opposite signs. Now the y-intercept is kind of cool, because it's super easy to find once you convert to standard form. And the y-intercept is just this last value. So it's going to be y equals negative 20. Okay? Now, the other way you could have done it, without expanding, is you could have just done negative 5 times positive 4, and that would give you negative 20. Okay, so if I were to graph this in Desmos, I encourage you to use Desmos. So this is y equals x minus 5 times x plus 4. And if I do that, I see the zeros are negative 4 and 5. They are, they're here as negative 4 comma 0 and 5 comma 0, same thing. Okay, so negative 4 and 5, negative 4 and 5. The order doesn't matter. If I said negative 4 and 5, or 5 and negative 4, it's the same thing. The y-intercept is where it crosses the y-axis, and that's right here at 0 comma negative 20, where y equals negative 20. Okay, so that's it for the first five minutes. Uh, this is a bit of a recap of last week. If you could do this question, you are golden. You can do whatever we've done so far um, in this new unit. I think that's the most important stuff. So again, if you can do this question, I think the first three lessons, you're good to go. And you can ignore stuff from before that was confusing you, because this here is what's important. All right. Um, now I want you to try this question as well. Uh, this is more from last unit. Uh, where you would just tell me each of these things for each of these curves, and the colors line up. Uh, so again, I encourage you to pause and try it, and then come on back. <clears throat> Alright, hopefully you paused it. If you haven't, pause now and try it. The zeros are here, negative 10, negative 6. This is my and sign, because I don't have a lot of space. The axis of symmetry runs right through the middle, and it's an x value, so x is negative 8. The vertex is right here. It has brackets because it's a point. The x value is just the same as the axis of symmetry. And the y value is negative 4. Okay, so if you didn't get the first one, maybe pause now and try the other two. 
So the zeros here, negative 4 and 2. The axis of symmetry, halfway between them, is x equals negative 1. And the vertex, I use that negative 1 again from the axis of symmetry, and the y value looks like negative 9. So if you didn't get either of the first two, pause now and try the next one. The zeros for the red curve are 4 and 9. 4 and 9. And the axis of symmetry comes right through the middle. And that's between 6 and 7, so that's got to be 6.5. And the vertex, I use that 6.5 again, and the y value is ugh, negative 6.5 something. Negative 6 point, let's say 0.25. Just make a guess. It doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, so if you can do that in the first question, you're good to go for this unit and the last as far as what we're doing now. And now I'm going to start the new stuff for today. So, um, I'm not on your note yet. We're going to do a little chat here where I get you to think, and then I'm going to give you the lesson, do some examples, and the rest will be practice for you. And the question is, if we know the zeros of a parabola, so let's say zeros are, let's say, 3 and 11. If I told you the zeros, could you tell me the axis of symmetry? I really want you to try this, because I think if you figure it out for yourself, and it's not a hard thing to figure out, um, but I think if you figure it out for yourself, you're going to be a lot better off than if you wait for me to tell you. Okay, hopefully you tried it. If not, pause and think about it. We know that the axis of symmetry is halfway between 3 and 11. So we could do this. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. And then go halfway between. So that would be right here. Right, there's 3 here and 3 here. So 4, 5, 6, so 7. So the answer is x equals 7. But I want to give you right now, the way. And the way to do this is to find the average of these two. So if I gave you two tests and you got a 50 on one and a 100 on the other, your average would be 75. And the way that we do that, it would be an x equals, because it's the axis of symmetry. We add the zeros, and that's 14, which obviously isn't right. That would be way over here if we're using these numbers still. And then I have to cut it in half, so I divide by 2. So I get x equals 14 over 2, or x equals 7, and look at that. Same answer as we got with our little number line here, except I didn't have to draw a number line, and I didn't need a graph, right? Over here, we use the graphs, but now we can just add the zeros and divide by 2, and that puts us halfway between. Okay, so let's start today's lesson. And it's a quick one. It just is going to require a lot of practice uh, on your side. So determine the features. So that's the zeros. The y-intercept. The axis of symmetry or the x value of the vertex. That's the same thing. And the y value of the vertex. Okay, so let's get to it. So the zeros, to find the zeros, and now this is on your note, so I encourage you to write these instructions. To find the zeros, change the signs of the numbers in brackets of factor form. So again, this is a recap from the other day, and so if you missed that lesson, you might be okay to just pick up from here. And so in this case, it's going to be x equals, from here, we get negative 1. And from here, it's minus 5, so the 0 is plus 5. And I can go ahead and I can plunk that one down there, and plunk that 0 down there. Okay, now, the y-intercept, we have two options. Either FOIL, then it's the last number, or multiply the numbers brackets of factor form. So we can either FOIL this or we can shortcut it. 
all we have to do is multiply the numbers in the brackets. So plus 1 times minus 5, which is going to be negative 5. And the reason that works is because when we expand, the last thing that we do in FOIL, the L, is we multiply this by this. And so negative 5 is the y-intercept. Okay, finding the axis of symmetry, go halfway between the zeros, which means add the zeros, then divide by 2. So if you have a graph, it's actually not that hard. You could just count. Um, so you could go like halfway between these, right? But I want to give you something that will work every time, because sometimes it'll be decimals, or it'll, you won't have a graph, so it's going to look like this. So x equals, I add the zeros, so the numbers from here, not the numbers here. So negative 1 plus 5, and then I divide by 2. So negative 1 plus 5, so negative 1 plus 5 is 4. So 4 divided by 2. And 4 divided by 2 is 2. So x equals 2. And that means the axis of symmetry comes right through here. And we know that our vertex is going to be somewhere on the axis of symmetry. And the last part, the hardest part of today, and after this, we're pretty much done. This is like the whole lesson. And it's only been eh, 12 minutes, but that includes the, the, the opening questions. So to find the y value of the vertex, we plug the x value of the vertex, which is the same as the axis of symmetry, into the original equation and simplify. Now check this out because there's even a built-in check here. So the original equation is y equals x plus 1, x minus 5, and I plug in the axis of symmetry or the x value of the vertex, which is 2. So 2 plus 1 times 2, minus 5, which is 3, times negative 3, which is negative 9. Now I want to show you something cool here, because I said there's a built-in check, and it's right here. If you do this properly when looking for the vertex, using the axis of symmetry, or the x value of the vertex, these two numbers that you get here are going to be the same, but one's positive and one's negative. So I'm going to say here that the vertex equals 2, that's this value, comma, negative 9. So 2, negative 9, there it is. And it even looks, it looks correct, right? Like if you went up from here, it would go through those points nicely. Now, some of you might be thinking, well, we have like all these points, but I feel like there should be another point over here. And you're absolutely right. I didn't put this in your note. It's not totally necessary, but it's so easy that I think it's worth your time. So number five here is add in the bonus point. And it just sounds fun, doesn't it? Uh, and to, to do that, you move the y-intercept across the axis of symmetry. I think I spelled that wrong. I sure did. And if you don't understand what that means, just watch this. So right here, we have the y-intercept. And this is the axis of symmetry. And it's kind of like a mirror. So if I go over 2 to get to the axis of symmetry, if I go over another 2, I've got my bonus point. And then this isn't in the instructions either, but this is necessary. You're going to draw your parabola through. And I'm having some glitches here that shouldn't look all stupid there. And then you draw the other side. Whoa! I might redo that one. This is hard to do on a computer. And you draw your arrows. And it's ugly, but it's correct. All my points are perfectly correct. Okay, so hopefully you filled that in. 
on your note right here on page one. Now I'm going to do some of these examples and I'm going to have you do some of them. And then at the end there's two practice questions for you and I might po uh, post a Google quiz. It'll be quick. I haven't decided yet because graphing on a Google quiz is kind of tricky. All right, so let's do the first example. And to this, how do we graph a parabola given its factored form? That's these steps here. Okay, so let's do the first example. So graph y equals x plus 4, x plus 1. So step 1, zeros x equals negative 4. Remember, I changed the sign in negative 1. The y-intercept, y equals, and I multiply the numbers that were in the original brackets, plus 4 times plus 1, y equals 1. The axis of symmetry, so I add the zeros now, not the numbers in brackets, so negative 4 plus negative 1, and I divide by 2. If you don't like this ugliness, put some brackets around each of the numbers. And these brackets will work every single time. So negative 4 minus 1, no shame in using a calculator, is negative 5. And then I take that and I divide it by 2. And I get negative 2.5. And finally, the y value of the vertex It's going to be, we take the original equation up here, and wherever there was an x, we plug in negative 2.5. So negative 2.5 plus 4, negative 2.5 plus 1. So negative 2.5 plus 4, negative is 1.5 and 2.5, negative 2.5 plus 1 is negative 1.5. So again, the check worked. This was 1.5 on the calculator. This was negative 1.5. So we get whatever that is. So uh, 1.5 times negative 1.5 is negative 2.25. And then I'm going to write vertex equals negative 2.5 comma negative 2.25. And let's plot everything. So the zeros, negative 4, negative 1. The axis of symmetry, oh sorry, the y-intercept is 1. The axis of symmetry is negative 2.5. So that's going to go right through here. Okay. The vertex is in purple, I guess. And it's negative 2.5. And then negative 2. So around there, negative 2.25. And then the bonus point, I take the y-intercept. It's 1, 2 and a half. So I go a half, 1, 2. And then I look at my points, see if they look correct, and they do. And then finally, I draw in my ugly curve. Full marks. All right, so let me uh, sort of make that bigger so you can see everything. Uh, it's a little small writing, but that's okay. Now what I would like you to do is to pause and try example two. Okay, and I'll do it. And then I'm just going to uh, pause, do it, and then press record again. So the answer is going to come up almost instantly. So I really encourage you to pause and try it for yourself. Okay, so there it is. Uh, it's a bit messy, um, but hopefully you did it okay. So my zeros, negative 2 and negative 3, they're really close together. My y-intercept is 6. My axis of symmetry, of course, is right between negative 2 and negative 3. So that's tricky. My vertex is negative 2.5. And negative 0.25, so it's like right, ugh. I'm going to zoom in, because this is not looking great. Alright, so vertex is like here-ish. It's probably a little higher, but that's okay. And then finally, my bonus point 
one, two and a half, a half, one, two. So it's right there. And then I put this in. Now we know this is right because I did it and I never make mistakes. Obviously I'm joking. Uh, but if you type this equation into Desmos, you'll get this graph. And you can check the zeros. Negative three, negative two. Negative two, negative three. Y-intercept, six. And the vertex, negative 2.5, negative 0.25. So it all checks out. Okay, so there they are side by side. And let's move on. Um, I think I'd like you to do these two on your own. And I'll post the solutions at the end of today or the end of Monday, depending on when you watch this. But I am going to do this one. And then I think the rest is just practice for you. I don't want to keep you too long here, because it's the same thing over and over again. And once you get it, I think you get it. Oh, there we go. I want to do one of these. These didn't appear somehow on this. Let me see what's going on there. Okay, so I fixed it. So I'm going to do this one. No, I'm not. You're going to do these two. I'm going to do this one. You're going to do this one. I'm going to do this one. And you're going to do this one. And then there's two for you to practice as well. Okay, so you do those two, and I'm going to do this one. All right, so here we go. Zeros. X equals positive 3 from the first, and negative 3 from the second. Uh, the Y-intercept is negative 3 times positive 3 equals negative 9. The axis of symmetry is going to be the 0, so 3 plus negative 3 divided by 2, and that's going to be 0. That's weird. And then the y value of the vertex is going to be the original equation, but I'm going to sub in 0 wherever there's an x, so 0 minus 3. And 0 plus 3. And if I do that and multiply, I get negative 9. So the vertex equals 0, comma, negative 9. All right, here we go. Let's plot the zeros. Negative 3, positive 3. The y-intercept is negative 9. The axis of symmetry is 0, so right down the middle... And the vertex is 0, negative 9. It's already there. So in this weird example, when our zeros are sort of the same distance from the center, from this uh, the y-axis, our vertex and our y-intercept are the same thing because the vertex is on the y-axis. So there is no bonus point, and there's nothing else to do. The only tricky part was getting this negative 9, and I don't even think that was that hard. So this is a weird example. It looks difficult, but once you do it, if you just follow the same procedure, it's going to work. You're going to get the same result. All right, last one that I'm going to do. So here we go. So the zeros are x equals 2, and negative 2. Oh, I'm wrong. Look at that. I made a mistake. First time ever. So the zeros are plus, plus 2 from here and plus 2 from there. So here... And here again? All right, whatever. Let's keep going. The y-intercept is going to be negative 2 times negative 2, which is positive 4. And that's going to be here. The axis of symmetry, or the x value of the vertex, is going to be 2 plus 2 divided by 2, which is 4 divided by 2, which is 2. So the axis of symmetry goes right through the zeros. That's weird. And finally, the y value of the vertex. And remember, if I'm going too fast, just you can watch it a couple of times. I just know some people will get this quick, and if I'm going too slow, they might just close it, and then they'll miss some of this tricky stuff. Uh, so the y value of the vertex, wherever there was an x in the original, I'm going to put in a 2. So 2 minus 2 times 2, where the x was, and minus 2. 2 minus 2 is 0, 2 minus 2 is 0, 0 times 0 is 0, 
So the vertex is 2 comma 0. So 2 comma... what? So now the vertex and the zeros are the same. Well, that's a bit of a weird special case, too. Again, if I follow the instructions, it works. So don't be afraid of these ones. And then I'm going to put in my bonus point. I just move the y-intercept across the mirror. I draw my curve. And there I have it. So I want you to do this one. And then your homework is this and this. And this stuff is all on your handout. Okay, so please try that stuff. Even if you're not graphing it, totally fine. Just make sure you can find the zeros, the y-intercept, the axis of symmetry, and the y-value of the vertex. And the bonus point is pretty sweet as well. Okay, good luck, folks. And we will have an online meeting this week. I haven't decided when yet. I haven't heard from a lot of people. Uh, for those of you that are doing this stuff and keeping up, and, you know, I hope it doesn't seem pointless, because I assure you that it isn't. Uh, even if this year ends up being that we never go back to class, um, you're going to take math next year. You have to. And knowing how to do this stuff now will make it next year a lot easier for you, especially when a lot of your classmates haven't been doing it and will be totally lost. So you'll be better off if you do this. Encourage your friends to do it. I know you don't want to, of course, um, but I encourage you to do it anyway. I'm doing it. So you should do it too. Okay, thanks folks.